Today, we're going to talk about changing licensing and credentialing applications to promote healthcare workers' mental health. I am Stephanie Simmons. I'm an emergency medicine physician and the chief medical officer of the Dr. Lorna Breen Heroes Foundation. My co-authors are Corey Feist, the co-founder and CEO of the Dr. Lorna Breen Heroes Foundation, and Abraham Segres, who works with the Virginia Health and Hospital Association. This work goes over the intervention and implementation of a project that uh, was performed in Virginia that was really the result of a collaboration between multiple organizations. So we worked along with the Virginia Medical Society, Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association, and a, a collaboration of folks, including the Virginia Nursing Association and Virginia HIMSS to design and implement this program, which we call All In, Caring for Virginia's Caregivers. We know that medical licensing applications, nursing licensing applications, and hospital credentialing applications often include invasive and stigmatizing language around mental health care. These applications include questions about mental health care that are treated differently than physical health care and ask healthcare workers to disclose at times any diagnosis or treatment that they've received in their lifetime, regardless of current impairment or impact on performance. The intervention that uh, we write about in Virginia was twofold. First, the Virginia Medical Society led a advocacy effort to change the law in Virginia so that no licensing application in Virginia could include these invasive and stigmatizing questions. These laws, House Bill 1573 and Senate Bill 970, were passed and signed into law. The second part of the intervention was a challenge for every hospital and health system in Virginia to audit their credentialing application remove any invasive or stigmatizing language around mental health and communicate those changes to the workforce. This intervention was part of a three-part program in Virginia that consists of the first part, addressing the licensing and credentialing applications. The second part, engagement with well-being programming by hospital and health system leaders that discuss the drivers of burnout and how systems change can positively impact the professional well being of the healthcare workforce. And third, creation of learning communities to focus on operational goals to improve the workplace environment for healthcare workers. All of the hospitals in Virginia were included in this effort. And you'll see here the badge uh, on the right hand side of. The screen is the All In Wellbeing First for Healthcare Champions Challenge Badge for Licensing and Credentialing. So, as hospitals and health systems achieve the licensing and credentialing reform, they are awarded this badge, which has a twofold purpose. First, it helps uh, organizations communicate to their own healthcare workers that it is safe to receive care, that they won't be asked about their care on their credentialing or re-credentialing applications. And second, it, this badge helps communicate to healthcare workers who may be considering to work in Virginia, that Virginia has gone through these changes at both the state and the hospital level. These invasive questions have a significant chilling effect on healthcare workers' willingness to seek mental health care. Starting in the pre-med years, when students are thinking about becoming physicians, becoming nurses, or becoming other licensed healthcare workers, they are worried that any mental health care that they will receive will impact their ability to be licensed and to work in a hospital or health system. So we know that these institutional sources of stigma have a negative impact, both from the data and the research that exists in the literature but also, tragically, from personal experience. So the Dr. Lorna Breen Heroes Foundation was founded after the death of Dr. Lorna Breen by suicide. And one of the things that she expressed prior to her death 
was concerned that because she had received mental health treatment, she would no longer be able to work in her hospital. She would no longer be able to be licensed in her state. I'm happy to report that 75% of the hospitals in Virginia were able to change their credentialing application to eliminate these invasive and stigmatizing questions. We set an initial goal of 100% of the hospitals to be changed in the first five months. And what we found is that it took some time for hospitals to understand the need for the change and to go through their internal systems of establishing the change. And so in the first five months, we really saw that innovator and early adopter group go through the change. We extended the challenge for an additional five months, and then we were able to find and accelerate that change to include the majority of the hospitals and health systems in the state. Now, I know the word laggard can have a negative connotation, but I want to point out that some of the folks in this last group who hadn't made the change in the first 10 months had significant barriers, such as being part of a multi-state system to making the change. But ultimately, that change had even a greater impact. So we have seen uh, hospital and healthcare systems that include hundreds of hospitals make the change as part of this challenge, and that has impacted healthcare workers in multiple states. What we have found is that through these challenges, there has been a revolution in the way that states are viewing these questions in their licensing application. So what you see here on the left is a national map of states and their current status of licensing application. And this is the current status as of the publication of this AJPH supplement. I'm happy to report that Tennessee has actually changed their licensing questions since the publication of this article. So if you look at this map just three years ago, you would see that only 17 states were purple, meaning that they had changed their questions and that uh, the rest of the states were unknown or were not in process. What we see now is that the purple states have expanded to 27, that we have an additional 10 states that we are known to be in process of change, and that the tan states are just unknown. We're not sure what their status is. And we have one state um, that has said, we're not interested in making this change. So as you can see, there's been a lot of progress in just four years in being able to make these changes at a state level. But we also need to be making these changes at a hospital and health system level around the country because it really takes both licensing and credentialing change to be able to impact fully the healthcare worker's willingness to seek care. Institutionalized stigma is a major barrier and has a huge chilling effect on a healthcare worker's willingness to seek care. Frontline health workers have spent decades preparing themselves to care for patients and have rigorous licensing and credentialing standards. We want to know that our current healthcare workforce are ready to care for patients and are able to care for patients. But we also know that a history of mental health care does not determine current ability to care for patients. And indeed, mental health care is being treated differently than physical health care in this regard. So we need to bring mental and physical health care into parity in credentialing to make sure that health care workers are encouraged to care for themselves. The public health significance of this intervention is profound. So we know that this was one of Lorna's concerns prior to her death. And as part of our foundation, our mission is to reduce the burnout of healthcare professionals and to safeguard their well being and job satisfaction. We want all hospitals and health systems in all states to make this change to help protect the health of the healthcare workforce, both for themselves and also for the healthcare and access of patients to healthcare across our country. Fortunately, it's not just Lorna. 
We know that concerns about privacy and access to mental health care with regards to licensing and credentialing applications have been the concerns of health care workers who have died by suicide across the country. And so I just want to recognize them and their impact on this work and this message as well. Thank you.